I was adopted by white parents and they abused me. Are there any specific moments that stood out that really think that was the final straw? I used to be locked in my room and they took the handle off the door. I had to urinate out the window. As we got older, I started learning from the other kids at school that something wasn't right. <sighs> that, that, that something. <laughs> I just wondered how you actually felt about your childhood. I was born in the early 1970s. My birth mother was white and my birth father was black. And in the 1970s, that was a big scandal. And so they were forced to give me up for adoption. And I was adopted through the church by a white Christian couple. There was four of us, two white girls and two mixed race boys. They brought me and the rest of us up in a very small village outside London. So, because of course your parents were white, but your biological parents were black and white, were you able to connect to the countries that they were from, especially the black side? Well, we grew up in a 99% white environment. They didn't teach us anything about black history, about the geography of the world, different countries, different languages. We had no input or support or information about what it means to be black or mixed race. The only information we had was the racist name calling. I started to notice people staring at us a lot, pointing at us, telling us go back to your own country. All the signs around me were that something wasn't right. Something wasn't right. So being excluded from your original heritage and being adopted by white parents, do you feel like there was a white savior complex almost? Yes, uh, absolutely. The history of the British Empire is the history of white people saving the rest, civilising the rest. So, looking back, it was like a colonial act, saving us, giving us a leg up, as it were, giving us a chance. There was a big price to pay, you know, for being rescued, and that played itself out in how they treated me and my brother. They treated us as second-class children. So would you say your upbringing was fairly middle class? Where we grew up, yeah, everyone lived in a big house. Everyone's parents had a job. We had piano lessons, we had au pairs, we had caravanning trips, we had a boat, several cars. So they were affluent, but spiritually we were very poor. And psychologically, it was just, it was just a vacuum. And my white parents, they endured racism. They were outraged at that because they were indignant because as far as they're concerned, they're doing the world a favor. They should be praised for what they've done. But instead, all they got was a bunch of racial abuse. Was there a particular moment within your childhood that you realized that either you were being abused or that something wasn't right within your family? For example, we were fed bread and jam five days a week all day. We, never, we only got a hot meal at the weekends. Our clothes were second hand. So from the outside, there was wealth, but on the inside, there was deprivation. I had to follow my mother around the house and wait for her outside the toilet because I couldn't be trusted. I used to be locked in my room and they took the handle off the door and I was be left in there overnight. I had to urinate out the window all my toys were locked away most of the time. We had comics, we were not allowed to read the comics because she used our toys, anything fun, she used fun things to abuse us. So the beatings got more frequent. I have my mouth washed out with vinegar if I swore. As we got older, I started learning from the other kids at school that something wasn't right. That, um, that, 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 that something. Do you want a break? <laughs> Are there any specific um, moments that stood out that really think that was the final straw? So when I was 15, I. One time the mum had the stick, or was holding a stick like that, ready to hit me with it, and I just grabbed it, and I just I threatened to hit her back with the stick. And that's when she 
feigned a breakdown. So they called social services and I was given the option of two foster homes. And I left at 15. It was really scary having to pack my suitcase at 15 and leave everything I knew behind. I was half worried that I would die if I left or something terrible was gonna happen to me if I left. Are you still in touch with your adopted parents? Well, I saw them just before COVID hit and the way they spoke to me, the way they treated me was like, I'm a stranger. So it's got to the point now where I just, I, I almost don't ever want to see them again or I would be quite happy if I never saw them again. So I just wondered if you ever got in contact with your birth parents. I was very privileged that I met both my birth parents. When I met my dad, he cried. I had an emotional reunion with my dad. With my mum, she wanted to see me straight away, as soon as she heard. To hear from both of them that they both would have kept me if they could, and they both would have loved me and raised me as their own if they could, but they had no control. So that's all I needed to know, that I was wanted and I was loved. Why is it so important for you to share your story now? A lot of transracially adoptive people, they didn't make it to their 20th birthday or their 30th birthday. The suicide rate is high and substance abuse is very high in our group. A lot of us ended up institutionalised. And it's a miracle, absolute miracle, that I've never seen the inside of a prison. And I want to leave a legacy of hope instead of despair. You know, I want to be part of that narrative, that optimism. Where we are now in 2022, do you believe that transracial adoption should be allowed? Absolutely, do it. But keep us in our mixed areas. Don't take us out to the middle of nowhere. I'm all for integration, but it has to be, you know, appropriate and carefully considered. I know that my story is a worst case scenario, an extreme case scenario. So don't let my story govern adoption policy or your attitudes to, to adoption.